talking Ew. with Beecher. Yeah, cool, right? Let's go. All right. Fucking Liam Harrison. <laughs> awesome. So, dude, I've had a chance to train with some of my um, my favorite fighters um, from doing this for so long. And you're one of them, dude. Oh, so I appreciate, I appreciate you coming out, dude. Nah, thank you, mate. I've, uh, I've enjoyed myself. Yeah. So um, do you like Texas? Do you know what? I've not had that much time to see stuff. Um, the food was good for the first day and a half until my fucking stomach. Yeah. My stomach's been ruined now. I've ate too much barbecue. I've had fucking meat sweats for two days. My yeah. stomach's been fucked. But yeah, I can see, I can see like one day of eating that, but I couldn't eat it. And it yeah. I got forced on, forced upon me for three days and I was just being polite saying, yeah, fuck it. Give me it. I'll eat it. But anyway, I'm day four. Like, no, take that shit away. I can't do it anymore. And also, man, you're going to gain a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, the thing is that I looked at my weight one day and then the next day I'd put on about six pounds because I'm retaining water. <laughs> I, was, I, I looked at mirror, I was like, what the fuck? I had tits down to my... I like, What's going on here? What, how's this happened? So so what weight do you fight at? I fight a 145 on one championship, which is a, a hydrated weight of 145. And right. I'm, I'm probably about... Usually, I usually don't really walk around any higher than 165. I'm probably about... 175 maybe now because yeah? I've been eating no, shit here that's too much yeah, that's too much right <laughs> uh, tell me about it yeah so Houston is one of the fattest cities in America <laughs> and, and there's a reason like people go why well it's so hot that we don't go outside yeah that's my dog he's an <laughs> so um, so we go from the AC into the car into a store and then we don't walk around outside yeah. it's too hot you know All right. so anyways so let me ask you this. You lived in Thailand for a while. Yeah. Where, where'd you stay at? And did you, how many times, I mean, how long did you stay and how many fights did you have during that? So I lived there for two years. Well, no, you were about, almost three years it was. So when I were 18, I just shipped up and I left. Um, I, I, would tell, I was saying a little story about it then after the seminar. I got fucking battered off a Thai. A Thai champion came over to England. We fought. I knocked him down in round two. I thought we were going to stop him. He got up and destroyed me. Like badly, badly destroyed me. So I thought, all right, I'm not going to be able to compete with these guys. I'm going to have to go over there and train how they do and do it how they do it. So I went uh, and I was there for about nearly for two and a half to three years. And I lived at Jitty Gym in Bangkok. And at the time, it was a very good gym. It had a lot of stadium fighters, some good level uh, trainers, a couple of ex stadium champion trainers. So there were a really good level of coaching, some really good level of fighters there to, to train alongside. And um, there were Channel Seven fighters there, Lumpini Stadium ranked fighters there. One of the fighters were, who were at my weight were ranked number three at Rajaramnan. So there's some really good training partners for me. And um, I stayed for two and a half years, and I probably fought about about 12, 12 to thirteen times. I, I That's fought, good. Yeah, I was fighting regular. Yeah. Um, I fought in stadiums about seven or eight times, uh, and travelled around fighting on provinces. I got on some pretty big TV shows, and so I made a, a decent reputation for myself and a decent name. So, how did you learn all the crazy moves that you do, like like all the little details? Because I've trained in Thailand. I never lived there, but I trained there, and they didn't show me anything. You kick pads. Yeah. That's so, it. I was lucky. I we I had three really really good elite level trainers at GG Gym, and I know what you mean about people not showing you. I've worked with so many Thai coaches before who don't show you shit. Nothing. They just try and get you on the pads and fuck you up, and, yeah. that, and that's all they do. They won't tell you about footwork. They don't tell you about stance. They don't tell you about movement. It's just like kick, kick, 10 kicks, bam, 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 bam. There's no actual coaching going on right. year. And I, I've been, obviously, uh, over the years, I've come through so many ties who have just been like that. But I was lucky over the, the three years that I were at Jitty Gym, when I was living there, we had Rajadam um, Nurm champion, Rajasak Savoropini, three-time champion, and he he's insane on the details. He's massive. And he, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that I was doing today, it'll have been from him. Watarashai Kao Samrit were another one. He were a top-level fighter. He were a champion at Rajadam Nern. He is massive on details. And the other one was Singh Denki at the Lumpini champion for three times, and he was massive on details as well. So I was lucky to have those three guys and not only them I had Richard Smith in England who he's really big on footwork details and stuff like that which is a lot of the a lot of the footwork and angle changes that's all from Richard uh, a lot of the tricky stuff is what I picked up off the ties and I was just picking up little bits off all of them and just trying to add it to myself really man that's awesome like I said mom, when I went we just kick pads yeah. and run kick pads that's it they didn't show us oh your footwork's bad or anything like that um, so that's a lot of reason why I have people more people 
I don't have a lot of ties here because just kick pads. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is as well, what started to happen is when, you know what ties are like? They're, they're in the gym for like a few months and then they just disappear and go off to other places and stuff. Yeah. So whenever those guys want in the gym and I'd be one of the other trainers and that's all they're doing to me, kick pads, bam, bam, bang. I started to pick up bad habits again and I get a bit sloppy with my footwork and I wasn't getting shown anything. And I, found, I might have got, yeah, all fit and I was strong, but like I was picking up bad habits and then, Without them there to be drilling them into me all the time, it would you want the same. Yeah, yeah. So, where did you start training at? Who was the trainer that you're talking about? You still train with him? Yep. So I started training at Bad Company Gym in two, oh, yeah, 1999. Oh yeah, 1999. I was 13 years old, and that was Richard Smith who started that gym. He started it in 1992. So when I started in 1999, he still had some pretty good level fighters like British and European champions and stuff there. Um. And then I've been there ever since. So and, over, over and the, you still train at the same gym. Yeah, still train at the okay. same gym. He still trains me. He still pad works me every day. Him and my cousin Andy Alson are my two trainers now. But oh, he's your cousin? Yeah. yeah I, I didn't know that. I wanted him to come with you because well, I, yeah. I had scheduled you and him to come here last time. Yeah. And it fell through for some reason. Uh, um, but you said he's hurt. Yeah, he's, he just had surgery on, on his elbow and he's uh, he's got a one-year-old baby in that minute. So it's a bit difficult for him to to get let, let out and stuff. Yeah. But uh, he's, a great, he's a great coach. I didn't know he was your cousin. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. He yeah, remember actually dragged me down to the gym first. He, uh, he I was going to ask you that. Like, yeah. like, how did you start training? What made you start like a one? Fight, well, I mean? he'd just gone down to the gym and just started. So he said to me, oh, do you want to come down? I've got this new sport. Um, I'd never even heard of it before, like back then. And he was like, it's amazing. Like you can, you can kick And that it. was Bad Company? Yeah, Bad Company. Oh, cool. Yeah. So he just started there. Maybe he'd been training about two weeks or something. He said, oh, do you want to come down and try it? Be good for a bit of self-defense and that. Because we lived in a bit of a rough area. And if you can't fight, you get fucking eaten up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did it real rough, mate. So, and the gym is right in the heart of that rough area. So we had some like all kinds of people coming through those doors over here. It's been, uh, it's been good. But um, yeah, he just dragged me down one day and I loved it straight away, but I didn't fall in love properly with it until the first time we sparred. And then I'd been training for about a month and Richard were, were in beginner's class, he were in beginner's class and he said, oh, do you want to move up to intermediate as a sparring tonight? And we were like, fuck yes, yeah. bro, yeah. <laughs> get, you know, he said, get your sparring stuff on then. So then me and Andy got kitted up and then we started sparring and I was like, wow, this is fucking, yeah, this is yeah. unbelievable, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was only like 13 at the time, but yeah. Damn, you started when you were 13? Yeah, yeah. Wow. But yeah, then that's it, I was just hooked ever since after that. Yeah. Mm. I wish I started that early. My first fight, I was 30. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I started way too late, but anyways. Mm. So you live in Leeds, Leeds. Yeah, North England, North, North England. England. It's about an hour from Manchester. Yeah. 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 I've been to Manchester. Like I said, I had some guys fighting the UFC. Yeah. So, so that made you fall in love with it. And so how did you live in Thailand? Um, how did you make money to survive? I just fought. That's <clears throat> why I was fighting so regular. So like over the space of two, two and a half years, I'd fought about 12 or 13 fights. I mean, I was like, no, almost like, like seven fights a year trying to average out. I think in 2007, I had 10 fights that year. Okay. Um, I had eight in Thailand and two in England. Uh, and I got recognized by Muay Siam magazine in Thailand as one of the best foreign fighters fighting that year in Thailand. I won um, a UK sports award for, uh, for I mean, recognition for Thai boxing and stuff. I had a massive year. I won eight, eight of the fights, two loss. And one of the losses, I had a rematch and knocked him out. So, yeah, uh, yeah so I had a really good year then. But that's how regular I was fighting back then. So when I was in Thailand, if I, if I wanted to stay there, I had to make sure I was fighting every five, six weeks just to keep regular training, like keep my, my money coming in regular because I moved out of the gym after a bit because the ties were just fucking driving me nuts. Oh, man. I was living on a mattress on the floor with mm. all the ties and that. And it was good for the first couple of months and then it got to about six months in. You know what ties are like. I did it. I was just like, I was like I'd get me the fuck out of here. I said, like, yeah. I can't do it. So I got a little apartment next door. <laughs> just a little box room. It had a bed, a toilet, and somewhere from it, I cooked some, a little bit of food if I wanted. But not, and then I think it was like phew, about 4,000 baht a month. But obviously, my, money, my money's going on food and here and there. And, I've, and my, my coaches took 20% of the gym and stuff. They got up to That's what money. I was going to ask about the money part yeah. of it. They yeah, took 20% they, Yeah, they took 20% of it and stuff. So if I wanted to maintain having a bit of money, I had to fight regular because you know what it's like. You don't get paid much out there. No. So when I first started, I think my first fight in the stadiums were like 3,000 baht or something. But then... By the time I left, I think the highest I got paid out there was 100,000 baht. So what's what's 3,000 baht equivalent to? 
Uh, About eighty dollars or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so look, I, I fought on the king's birthday. Oh, let me rephrase that. I got my ass whooped on. The king's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm fifty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Three hundred thousand people. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I get it. That's a big show as well, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy, but. So, so I try to tell a lot of people that you need to stick to a gym that you like, and, and you've done that. And, and the reason I say that is because they can see you progress and fix the things that you know that you do wrong, or, or enhance the things that you do right. And if you're bouncing around from gym to the gym, they're telling you to do something different than they're telling you, and they're telling you to do something different. And, and you're a prime example of that of how 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 good you got fast by doing that. Yeah. You know. So, um, uh, how about one championship? Okay, let's get to get to this question. All right, what the fuck happened to your leg on the last fight, dude? Uh, I have to. I have to uh, ask you so what happened, dude? It, it won't even kick me that hard. No, no, it must have just kicked me right on the right spot, and my knee must have been ready to go because the damage that happened from that. I tore my meniscus and my patella tendon, and the doctor said we were lucky. If the patella tendon would have tore off the bone. I would have been out for almost six months to a year. And at my age, I wouldn't have been able to come back from that. Yeah. So that would have been like career threatening. But luckily, it just tore straight across the front, just a big tear in it. I've only got half of a meniscus anyway, and the, the rest of that tore. Um, so, yeah, that's what happened. I mean, so did I mean, you have surgery? I had, yeah, stem cell and PRP straight in to heal the tears. So so stem cell is legal in uh, England? Yeah. Yeah, there's one one uh, place that does it in the whole of England, and that's down London. So I went really? down there to see my doctor. He had a little play, have a look under ultrasound and MRI and that, and, he's, and I was saying, please don't tell me you have to go intrusive here to do anything. And he said, we can do the stem cell and the PRP, and it'll heal the tears. So luckily... And it worked? Yeah, How yeah. long ago was that? About 10 weeks. No, about 11, 11 weeks ago. 11 weeks, yeah. and he was in here showing moves today. So, man, I, so before I came to here, I started about training for the full week. The doctor said to me, he said, three months, you'll be able to start light training. But I've, I, was yeah. like, I was like, I haven't, I haven't got three months here. So <laughs> I've, I've been smashing my rehab. I've got really good, like, S&C and a physio who've been doing all my rehab with me and stuff. And my legs started to feel stronger and that. And then I, I before I came here, it had been nine weeks. And I started full training. I could spar. I could kick pads. I could do a That's again. That's crazy. And it's yeah, from so, stem cell. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I have a friend who has a stem cell place in, in Tijuana, um, Scott Nelson. Mm. And um, I, I've i never tried it. I, I'd like to. Yeah. I mean, it seems that it works. The PRP is good as well for you. What, to, what is PRP? It's platelet-rich plasma. So they'll take your own blood out of you, spin it, get all the goodness out of it, and then inject it into the tears in your muscles. So into the place that's injured. Yeah. And yeah. that works too? Yeah, that went straight into my patella tendon, did that. The stem cell were in the, around my meniscus and all my joints, and then the, the PRP went straight into my, the tear in my patella tendon. Wow. Yeah. And it, and wow. That's, it's amazing. Like, it's to, amazing. To what, when I dispersed, the first surgeon I spoke to, you were like, oh, no, you can't do that, it won't work. So I rang the, the of course. stem cell guys, and he went, they went, yeah, of course it'll work. I went, well, this guy did and said, listen, these old school surgeons who want to cut you up and mess around inside of you, they're getting put out of work. That's why they're telling you it don't work. I'm like, oh, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I tore my MCLs one time, and um, that's a crazy story. But um, the the orthopedic surgeon looked at my legs, shook them, you know, shook, shake your yeah. knees, and then says, oh, yeah, you need surgery. I was like, you, you that's how you get paid. <laughs> yeah. You didn't even take an MRI. How the fuck do you yeah, know? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, that's I think that's that's part of it. And it's not legal here in America. Oh really? It's not legal. Why? Because they can't make money off of it. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get banned again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so, that's unbelievable. I've had never knew it were illegal yet. So that's why my friend has one that's in, in bullshit. Tijuana. Fuck yeah. me. That, yeah. That's why Joe Rogan always says, get to Tijuana for stem cell. Yeah, because it's not legal. Wow. Because the, it would put doctors out of work and they wouldn't make money. Maybe you know? they, yeah, yeah. Just like in 2020. We can't talk about that. We're good. <laughs> about, about, yeah, don't get me excited on that either, man. We'll be here all day. Man, I've already had a podcast taken down because I had a doctor talking about, you know, 2020. So, but we don't want to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're in one championship now. How do the rules differ in one? And, and I heard you talking about long guard and, and the differences in long guard. Yeah. I fought MMA first, so I covered tighter. Yeah. So I was kind of used to it. Um, but tell me the differences in the rule set and, and you know, guard and things like that. So the rule set is three, three minutes. It's called, I think, in, 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 
international rule set or something they call it, which is not it's not Muay Thai. So so even when it says Muay Thai fight on the screen, yeah, well it's Muay Thai rules, but right. it's not scored like traditional Muay Thai. Um, and they they break the clinch a little bit earlier. Like traditional Muay Thai for me is five three minute rounds. Right. Um, you let the clinch go. The scoring is the same as in Thailand. How we score it in England? Looking for good body kicks. Looking for. Effects, they're looking for ring mastership, control, dominance, all that sort of thing. Balance. Yeah, balance, yeah, yeah exactly. all that sort of stuff. That's five threes Muay Thai. One championship, they want knockouts, basically. They, want, yeah. they, want, they say to you in the rule sets that we're looking for aggression, we're looking for forward pressure, we're looking for this, that, and the other, and all that sort of stuff. So it's not the same as five threes Muay Thai. So you, one, you need to be more aggressive. Two, the... The gloves are four ounce. It's MMA yeah. gloves, and those one championship ones, they're, they're unforgiving. The tiny, so yeah. Obviously, I've I think I'd had about 115 pro fights right. um, before I went to one championship, and when I started that, I was doing things like long guard and like yeah, that. but but and, not tight. Yeah, like yeah. a little looser because of the big gloves. Yeah, and bigger gloves. It's, exactly. Yeah. So and it, there were just habits that were already in there, and. Mm -hmm. It would it would trial and error really in the in the, the ring or the cage what I was going through. So I think the Rodlet fight, the first time I wore the, the four ounce gloves, I was winning that fight and then I got stuck on the ropes. I did the long guard, didn't do it tight enough, and I left a gap and he hit me right on my ear and I got an eight count for it. Yeah. I got up, finished the fight strong, battered him in the third round, but it don't matter in a three round fight. If you get knocked down, you're not gonna win. Right. It's so like there was stuff there where I thought, I bet shit, I better go back to the gym here and like get these gloves on because I realised how different it actually is. There's so many things that you can and can't do, like defensive wise and that, and you just need to be tight, you need to have better head movement and yeah, basically that. So you you have to cover tighter. So did you start training in four ounce gloves after that? A little bit, but then again on the on the Mung Thai fight, something else happened that I'd not anticipated. Okay, I went to he knocked me down with a head kick straight away in about a minute into the fight, I, and I saw the kick coming a mile off. I oh. went to trap it like this. Oh. Didn't realize obviously an eight ounce glove has got a big surface area. So when you trap it like that, the shin hits the glove. I didn't. My arm was there. The front of his shin hit me straight on the chin and, oh. knocked, and knocked me down. Because because your hand was like this? Yeah, my, my arm was close to my ear, oh. so I left it there and his shin hit me straight on the chin. Oh, shit. And I, it was weird because I'd watched the kick come in. I'm going, right, I've got this. I'm going to sweep him. <laughs> and then I went, I was looking up at the lights. I'm like, hey, what the <laughs> fuck has just happened there? And then I got up and he, he dro <laughs> dropped me again. But then obviously I got up and I knocked him down three times and I ended yeah. up winning by knockout. But That still fight was amazing. Dude. Yeah. I was yelling. I, I have a big TV in my gym. We're watching. I'm yeah, yelling at the TV. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But then it, like at the end, I'm thinking after the fight, it were amazing. But then I think, right, got to go back again. There's more stuff that it's like I'm learning every time I put those little gloves on and stuff. Yeah. The more stuff that you can and can't do here. So it's just like trial and error at the minute. But I'm enjoying it because I did pretty much everything that I wanted to do in traditional Muay Thai. I had 115 pro fights, near enough. Um, I won eight world titles. I did a lot more than I probably thought I'd ever do. So I've done everything that I wanted to do in that. So I'm enjoying fighting this. It's like a, a bit of a different sport, really. And it's exciting and everyone loves watching them. Yeah. Because the, the, the level of stand-up fighters on one championship, all the top ties and Europeans are some really elite level guys on there. So... When you put those good type of guys in four rounds MMA gloves, it just makes them twice as dangerous. Yeah. So now, now, now the next question that that people are weird about asking, uh, I'm not asking you how much, but what's the pay like? It, yeah, it's, it's a lot better than I've ever had uh, yeah. for uh, normal standard Muay Thai. It, it, it's very good. I can't complain. Right. Um, plus, I've got the bonuses now as well. Right. So that's like if you get not a decent knockout or you have a crazy fight or you, like a, you're, a, you're in an absolute war there's a good chance you're going to get $50,000 bonus on top Man. of your, on top of your purse I got a $100,000 bonus for the Mung Thai fight on top of my purse yeah so, fuck yeah so but after that fight I, I remember thinking to myself I thought yes I'm going to get 50 I've, that's got to be worth a, I thought yeah. that's worth a bonus yeah. in my head I was telling myself surely I've won the bonus for that fight Yeah. and then they went right double bonus 100 grand I was like fuck it fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that's way more, I mean, than than any other promotion in America, maybe in the UK too. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure. I, I get paid more in one championship than ever of anywhere else in the world. Yeah, so and, and that's what I'm, I try to um, tell people. Like, they say, well, why don't they fight for, like, the UFC? I'm like, well, first of all, they don't do Muay Thai. And then um, they're getting paid more there, yeah. you know? I, I saw guys that, when I went to Roger Domnarn, and guys won the championship 
walking home in the tie shorts that they fought yeah. in, you know, and yep. he's a champion, dude. Yeah. yeah, so that's pretty awesome. That and, and one championship is huge. Yeah, really good. it's massive. It's got a, a massive like global stage, and the, the I'm, they're, they're pushing into America now with the Amazon Prime, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they've got some shows booked here for the start of early May next year and stuff. So it's it's gonna just keep getting bigger, and I think putting the Muay Thai fights in four ounce gloves and that level of stand up, I think it'll be massive in America for trying to cross over. No, to the MMA guys who don't really watch too much Muay Thai, but they like MMA and they like watching stand up MMA. And when they see this, I think they might get older and think, oh, oh shit, this is this is special, this, yeah. So what do you think the reason is, especially Americans, I, I have a theory too, but that they watch MMA and not Muay Thai. Because everybody knows what a punch and a kick is, but you don't know that I'm trying to do a reverse triangle. Like, you don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you just watch Muay Thai? The, th the thing is, there's loads of little different factors here. This is why we've been trying to, like, westernize it more in UK, because before we do five three-minute rounds, Two minute break, like Thailand. Everyone would be coming in, doing the Y crew and the Ramu in. The, the crowd were like, "What the fuck's going on here? We want right. to see. We want to see a fight." Right. So more shows in England now. They've cut out the no Y crew, no Ramu in. You have a minute rest in between rounds, so people aren't waiting around bored waiting yeah. for the action. And even some of them have cut the fights down to three rounds, three three minutes, just to make it more action packed and it's more fan friendly for people. Then yeah, you have to win in three. In a three-round fight, you have to win two rounds. Yeah, exactly. In a five-round fight, you can drop a round and yeah. still win the thing, you know? Yeah, but yeah. in a three-round fight, you don't want to drop a round. And people you know? get bored of watching that opening first two rounds of them yeah. feeling each other out yeah. and stuff, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think that a lot of it is, uh, okay, so regular people watch MMA and they think, I could fucking do that, man. I'll fight a motherfucker right now. I just <laughs> see red, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that, that normal people think they can do it. They think that, oh, it's just street fighting, yeah. you know? And then I think that when people watch like Muay Thai or boxing, they're like, oh, well, I can't do that. Yeah, I'd, I'd have yeah. to train to do that. Yeah. So th that's what I think. Well, you do. You always see, when, remember when tap out were a thing, them tap out. Oh, shit, yeah. You always see just fat idiot guys who you could tell never been in a gym in life with a tap out t-shirt or yeah. walking around like that. Yeah, there were so many sure. of them in England and stuff as well. For sure. Yeah. So I know the the guys that own tap out owned they sold it you know what they sold it for 500 million fuck fucking between three people wow 500 million dude. wow and and i remember them well, i used to do jujitsu i do jujitsu too i knew them when they had one van and the shirts in the back of a van and they'd go to jujitsu competitions all around california and they made 500 000. wow that's awesome right yeah 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 so yeah, but I, I know what Fair you mean. Fair play, yeah. <laughs> so what about, um, do you, did you ever work or did you just do Muay Thai? So when I was coming up from through the ranks when I was like 16, um, I worked at like a little supermarket, just, okay. just part-time, just like two or three days a week just so I had some extra money. Okay. Um, and then I just all my other time was spent in the gym trying to get better. Then when I got to 17, 18, I went to Thailand. <laughs> When I got back from Thailand, my money in the UK, I had to obviously, I disappeared for two and a half years. And when I came back in UK, my money was still the same as what it was, even though I'd improved massively for loads of high level fights in Thailand and stuff. So I thought, you still have to work your way up. So I had a couple of fights and then thought, right, obviously I'm 20, 22 years old or something now and I'm going to have to do so a little bit, no, 21 or what, I'm going to have to do a little bit of some on side. And I started like this, doing this driving job at like 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. So I'd get up at half three, do a go do this driving job, go home, sleep for an hour, go to the gym 10 or 12, go back to the gym six to eight and then sleep and then get up. But that only lasted about, it didn't last long. It lasted about six months. And then after I'd fought Sanchai for the first time, when I was like 21, 22, then I managed to start getting some PTs and in all my time we just spent in gym then. So I was lucky really. So you do, you do private lessons? I used to do. I, when I'm fight, tra fight training now, I try and stay away from them because holding pads for me is fucking harder than, Honestly, hold people. Wait, wait, wait. Say it again. Yeah, honestly, holding pads is harder Fuck. than training for a fight. It drains you, especially when you've got like fucking some big giant booting you all over and it, it's tough holding pads. And what I'd be doing from my mid 20s, and I'd, I'd, I look back on it now and think, how the fuck did I do that? But obviously, I was younger. I'd go to the gym on the morning and do two hours of PTs. I'd then train myself for an, an hour and a half, two hours. Then I'd do three or four more hours of PTs. Then I'd train again. I think, how the fuck did I used to do this? It was, yeah. yeah, I could never do it now. I'd fall apart. Man, I used to live in Vegas and I used to hold pads for Forrest who weighed 240, 
and Mike Whitehead weighed 280 yeah, yeah. and like six other people. And then Kevin Ross and Chaz would kick harder than those guys every day. Yeah. And now I'm like, no, <laughs> my yeah. body's fucked up yeah. from doing that. Yeah. Honestly, it takes so much out. Shoulders, your shoulders are the worst. Your, your, like, all your, oh, your scapula and all yeah. that. And then your front of your, oh, it's awful. Yeah. yeah. Man, and, and, and as soon as I put the pads on these days now, because when I'm not training for a fight, I'll be straight back in the gym helping our other fighters. So I'll pull pads for all the other fighters. But I dude, say that again to my fighters. Too. Yeah. So as, soon as, <laughs> a, so as soon as I've had a fight, I try and make all our fighters do this in the gym. As soon as you've had a fight, if you're not injured, get back in the gym, help everyone else. Fuck yeah. So I, I would, just before I came out here, I was pad working to one of the guys who were fighting. As soon as I put the pads on, I get tendonitis in my elbows <laughs> and all sorts of stuff. It's like uh, two minutes your elbows yeah, start turning yeah. shit. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so so you never did work then, just little jobs. Yeah, here and there. no, that's never had awesome. work. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Because I, I didn't give myself like a plan B. Everything all went on plan A, so I had to make plan A work. And that. But you know, there's a lot of people that say when you're going for a goal, if you have a plan B, you're not going to exactly, finish the yeah, fucking goal. Exactly. Because you're thinking, oh, it don't matter because I can fall back on that. Yeah. I didn't have that, so I had to make it work. And that's that were fucking it. great, dude. Mm. That's great. Um, so you fought Sanchai twice, and then three you went times. In- Three times? Yeah. I thought it was twice. So I fought him twice in England, and then the third time we fought in Macau, near Hong Kong. Macau. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was twice, yeah, dude. Shit. Um, uh, and then you went and trained with him. Yeah. So do they show, like, all the crazy Sanchai moves over there, or, or do they just, I mean, just To be fair, Sanchai is a decent coach. He's, um, yeah? he, will all, he doesn't train much. Like, he'll go into the gym, he'll make a little video for Instagram, and then he'll put his clothes back on. He'll go crack open a beer and he'll just stand around the gym. <laughs> he literally, he, he kicks the pads for two or three minutes and that's all it is. It's all for Instagram. And then he goes and fights. Yeah. And then he still beats people oh, up. Uh, and he's 41 or 42 or something. But yeah, yeah. He, uh, he doesn't train anymore. He only comes into the gym and does that. But he always, when he's walking into the gym, he'll come around and he'll he'll correct stuff that I'm doing wrong. And he'll say, no, no, okay. do, do it like this. And he'll help me out. And then he'll give me a few little tips on whatever I'm doing. So it is, it's cool to train alongside him. Oh, that's even, awesome, though even though he didn't do much, he'll, he'll still like be giving out advice and that. No, that's good, dude. That's good. So how long did you train there? Um, I just, the first time I trained there were in 2018. And now whenever I go to Thailand, that's where I go. That's where you go? Yeah. What, what's his gym? Yokao Gym. Yokao yeah, Gym. Yeah, it's in yeah. right middle of Convert as well. So it's easy to get everywhere to the sky trains there, underground sites. It's, it's a good location. Oh, yeah. Sukhumvit's a crazy place. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> they put us in Sukhumvit for the world championships one time. Yeah. And I was like, Sukhumvit, really? You guys are going to put us there? Do you? That Ambassador Hotel, were it not? Ambassador yeah, Hotel, yeah. yeah. That's right next to Soy Cowboy as oh, well. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, dude. That's right. <laughs> we're walking down and we're like, uh, welcome to Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, well, that's cool, dude, and and I appreciate you coming out to Texas and doing these seminars. We learned a lot of cool shit. If you guys want to book him, you gotta get him get him in while you can, you know. Yeah. So t- today you go back in a couple hours, anyways, and go back to England. Then yeah. what's next in one championship? So, like I said, I'm back training now after my injury. So I'm in talks with him at the minute for the 14th of January. Um, we just need to decide on an opponent. And where's that fight? That's gonna be at the Impact Arena in Bangkok in the big stadium in Bangkok but obviously the, 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 it's hard to get hold of them at the minute when I'm out here so as soon as I get back home I'm going to talk to my manager say right let's get this set in stone but if that doesn't happen there's also a chance for the WBC Diamond Belt in February in England so I've got options but hopefully the one championship one comes off and hopefully I'll be get put on the American card in May as well So there's a card in one championship coming to America? Yeah, coming to America. I was reading about it on Twitter the other day. Like, they released something, uh, just like a little teaser thing. So, yeah. Where is it at? I, I think it said Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, because of the rules and stipulations of mm-hmm. sanctioning and all that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Welcome to America. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we don't make money, we ain't going to let you do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you do fight in Colorado, though, that uh, elevation... It's a real fucking thing. So you're not the only person who said that to me. Yeah. So I'll have to come out like a, mm-hmm. a little bit before it and get some. It's man. I, I, I lived out there for a little while. That's another long story. But when I went out there, I was in kind of decent, decent shape, shadow box. And I was, <sighs> it's a real yeah. thing. Yeah. It's a real thing. Like I was right. like, bullshit. There's no way I'm going to get tired. <laughs> Shit. It's a real thing. Really? Yeah. Fuck me. Try to go early and you get your red blood cell count up, you know? Yeah. Um, so, 
So do you know an opponent that you're going to fight? They've mentioned a few. I'm not allowed to say yet. I'll get in trouble. Right, right. Uh, because if it doesn't happen, figured. I'll come off. Yeah. I had to throw it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to say it just yet. Um, if, if the one that they have mentioned comes off, it'll be massive. And I'd love to do that fight in America. So, yeah. yeah, fingers crossed. So why don't you think that one uh, comes, I have a theory about this too, and one comes to America as much? Uh, I don't know because it was like me. It was obviously they've got the UFC to contend with and stuff, but like, because it's like a main, it started off in Singapore and they've got a lot of like top level Asian athletes. I think the, their main goal was to break Asia and that's why it's all about respect and you don't want no trash talking, etc. But as it's gone on a little bit now, like the trash talking starting to come out a little bit, they, they, they're encouraging us to trash talk a little <laughs> bit. They do that before, like one of my fights, before they say, after fight, uh, say this on mic. I'm like, I'm not fucking saying that. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, what's wrong with that? I'm like, that comes across as a bit racist, I can't say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. I'm not saying no. that. But yeah, they're trying like tell you to say some shit now and that. So it, they're going to try, try to bring, especially with coming to America and stuff like right. that. I reckon we'll see a little bit more of that. So do you think that uh, the testing in steroids has anything to do with it? Do well, we've, we've started now. Oh, they started yeah, testing? Yeah, they started. In one? Yeah, so for my last fight, uh, I believe we were all tested then. Oh, really? Um, but yeah, yeah. so that, that is that is in there, yeah. No. Nah. Yeah, so that were... It, do you know what as well? So there were some cheats that have been caught red-handed because we were flying to Singapore for the fights on the Sunday... And on the Saturday, we got an email saying, right, when you arrive in Singapore, the the in, uh, the, the dope testing will be taken care of by so-and-so in this agency. Uh, and now I'm like, ooh, oh, somebody's busting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, they got over him like that uh, in UFC. Yeah. They had a press conference and went, you know, they're all at that table. And then when they stepped out of the press conference, the commission was like here pee in this oh. and it was a month before the fight so yeah. they busted but the him. thing is mate you, you saw what happened to his body you had Uber uh, yeah. Uberim Bro, Uberim was... and then nah. Overim were all saggy in there <laughs> but <laughs> now I mean, now he's back in glory they can't be testing because we've yeah. seen him again he's jacked no. again now absolutely so, jacked dude that that brings up glory you know how they messed up here in America mm. well they came here and first thing they did was they snatched up all the fighters that uh, you know the good American fighters but they had huge shows like Amsterdam arena size yeah. shows and nobody came. Yeah. Cause dude, we want to see Americans want to see Americans win. Yeah. You know, and they don't want to see some, some dude with 200 fights smash an American guy. Yeah. And then nobody knew what it was. So, but they, they rented all these huge places all around America and they were huge, big productions. Nobody went. Oh, really? Man. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so. Because he's, he's huge in like, in, over in Amsterdam, in Holland, and it's Belgium, huge. and places like that. It's massive. 60,000 people. Yeah, so easily. Like, they'll go watch um, Bad Harry, and they'll get, they yeah. love watching you know, them record the big heavyweights. Yeah. And that. They'll absolutely. sell out that arena you know, every every day of the year. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So, so that's what's next for you, so, uh, hopefully January. And yeah. your knee's feeling better. Right? A lot better, yeah. I'm black I'm back to, well, I'm back to probably 95%, well, 90% full training. Uh, so when I get back to England now, I'll just get straight back on my VR. I'll carry on my rehab and get my legs stronger and but I'll push through and start a fight camp as well. Like so, I said, time, do you know what? I've, I've, pro I've probably rushed back a little bit too soon, but I don't, time is of the essence. I'm 37. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to wait around. My knee felt all right the first time I sparred. So obviously I'll test it out sparring and stuff, but I don't want to wait around. It feels like it's been it's stronger than it it was before the injury. Um, so the people are going to kick it when I fight. It has to be strong. So yeah. that's what I have been working on. I've been working on the stability of that, and it feels good. So yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. That was fast too. Yeah, yeah. Man. Like I say, the, the PRP treatment and stuff like that, stem cells, it's they're for muscle tears and tendon tears and stuff like that. They're amazing. I need some of that. Mm. Scotty Nelson, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, oh, it's expensive, huh? Yeah, it is a little bit expensive, yeah. yeah. But you get what you pay for, and if it got me back this quickly, I'll pay it again every day a week. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah man. I, I need all that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to love to just go in and go, do me. Yeah. Every, yeah, stem cell me everywhere, Dude, please. I mean, yeah. I've been holding pads for 20 years. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, and you said that you don't own a gym. You still train at Bad Company. And, and yeah. I asked you that question because I did own a gym when I was still fighting. I didn't own a gym. I worked at a gym when I was still fighting. That was my job. It's hard. Yeah, very tough, It's man. super hard to do and that. I, I know some guys who, who, who do own their own gym and have their own fighters, but still try and get time to fight themselves. And I could never do that. I, just, fighting is a selfish sport. 
It is. You have to be selfish and you have to look after yourself in number one. You can't be worrying about, oh, Scott, you make, what's your weight? How much weight you got to lose? Oh, are you fit? No, get on pads with me and worrying about all this and all that, what all your other fighters are doing and go traveling the country every week, cornering everyone, not having no time to yourself. The weekend as a fighter, my last session is on a Saturday morning and I've got from Saturday morning to Monday morning to myself as my downtime. And then I'm still doing seminars, but then like five or six weeks before a fight, I even stop all my seminars and my time on the weekend is just downtime, get my head right, just mm -hmm. rest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I have a saying too, the same thing. When you're a fighter, you have to be selfish. When you're a coach, you have to be selfless. Yeah, 100%. So I'm, I'm in the gym training and I trained with Master Toddy. He was really good. Yeah. All right. Um, so when I was training, people would come and ask me, hey, how do I do this? And I was like, man, leave me alone. I'm fucking training, yeah. you know? At my gym, ask me, but not here, you know? And, and you can't do that as a coach. You don't have no students. You Get have coach, to help yeah. people. Are, yeah, exactly. That's, That's your job. job yeah, yeah, yeah. To help 100%. people. And if you don't help them, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that, speaking of the weight cut, the no weight cut part of one championship, um, that makes people walk around or, or, or do you diet down? Do you have a dietitian? How do you make weight I've, without I've got, cutting weight? I've got a nutritionist. Um, so I usually I would, my weight would be, with it, the week of a fight, I'd probably be within five, six kilograms of my fight weight. But with one championship, I make sure I'm moving three kilos of it. Uh, because all you need to be doing is you need to be hydrated um, because they test your piss with like this machine that they stick in just to see your hydration levels. And if you're over a certain amount and you're not hydrated enough, you're not allowed to get on the scales and you've got to go get hydrated and then come back. So what I always do is I make sure that I've been drinking all week long um, right up until the the day of the of the weigh-in itself, and even on the morning of the weigh-in, I might have like five hundred ml of water. When I know I need the toilet, then when the toilet's coming on, I make sure two hours before the weigh-in, I need the toilet. I'll sweat suit up, uh, sweet sweat and Albaline all over me. I go cut three four kilos when I come back, and then when I piss, my piss is hydrated, and you don't feel shit from doing that either because you've been drinking all week. You've even been drinking on the morning of the weigh-in. I've had fights before, like the day before the weigh-in, I've cut like fucking five pounds, and then on the day of the weigh-in, I've still had another seven or eight pounds to cut, and you end up, you know what it's like when you yeah. come away, like you just fucked up. Yeah. Uh, it's not nice. So no. with that one, at least, as long as you diet down properly, my nutritionist, he's always on my case. He says, right, do a 10-week plan. Uh, this is where I want you at the end of every week and he'll check in to see if I'm there and if we're not he'll cheat tweak things up if I've gone a bit too low he'll put me on more calories and wow. stuff. so it's good having someone like that in, oh, my, yeah. in my team yeah yeah that water trick I'm glad you said that I, I had no idea you yeah. told me that earlier uh, in the car You told me, and I was like wow that, yeah. that's smart dude that's yeah, smart yeah, yeah. so you but still it, cut a little bit of yeah you still cut a little bit, a little bit but it stops like the ridiculous cuts of people yeah. coming in and losing five, six kilogram on the morning of the weigh-in and then sucking it straight out, putting it straight back on and then you yeah. come back and you find some guy who's humongous. But yeah. It's fairer. Yeah, we all do that because if he's going to do it, I have to do it mm. or else or else I'm finding somebody twice my size. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, and then the next question I was going to ask you. So you're one of my favorite guys, all right? So check this out. When you punch and kick pads, you are like, I'm old school. I'm an old guy. When we punch and kicks pads, every punch and every kick is as hard as you can fucking kick. But you're not right. hitting pads. Fucking right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So what is with all these guys? What do you think that they're like, okay, 10 kicks. And they go, pa, pa, pa. I had a guy, I put my hand in front of me, kick my hand. I'm like, that didn't even hurt. Mm. Like, kick that fucking pad. What do you think about that? So the way I hit pads, everyone wants to see now I hit pads on my Instagram channel. And people go, uh, it's only a 30 second clip. I bet you can't do that for fucking five, six rounds. Watch me fucking try, mate. Watch you me have try. To. I tried and got all out from round one to however many rounds I'm doing. If I'm doing seven <laughs> rounds, I will still be trying to do that in round seven. I use my pad workers my, my, to get my fitness up, to get my fucking high intensity cardio. Um, there's obviously the game plan coming in from the pad, but pad man as well. So I'm thinking about what we're doing in the fight, but I'm still going to blast it as hard as I can because I'm using it to get fit. I'm using it to try and get as fast as possible, as sharp as possible, to hit as hard as possible. Because when I get in there and fight, I'm not going to hit him like this. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm going to try and rip his head off. I'm going to try and yep. bang him out. So if you're not doing that on the pads, then why, you're not going to be doing it when you come to a fight. Um, so yeah, I use my, my, my pad work sessions to like for get my cardio up, try and work on my sharpness, my speed, my power. I, I go all out and 
I enjoy eating pads like that. If someone brought some pads out to me and went, oh, no, I can't hit, let's hit the pads and went, whoa, whoa, you're eating them too hard. Let's just let, <laughs> no. let, let, let's just do it like me. Let's just do it medium so it looks nice. And uh, yeah. I'm like, get a fuck out of here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, 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 I've held pads for some of the guys before out here, and they've, bah, bah, bah. I'm like, no, 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 no. Hit, no. Hit, hit the pad. Hit the fucking hit the pad. Fucking pad. Yeah. Imagine going out to Thailand and training at some of the gyms we've done, and, and you start doing that, and going, whoa, 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 no power, no yeah. power. 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 Yeah, yeah. Every kick. Yeah. Every punch. Exactly. Every elbow. Exactly. Everything. Yeah. Okay. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so you got to go. You got to go home next. So what, what else was I going to ask you? I don't know. So, so man, we're at the end of my podcast, and it, it's a while. But here's what we do. I have ten questions. All right. You should watch it anyway. Uh, oh I'm wait, gonna, I'm gonna start watching it. Actually. So wait, wait, wait. I got one more thing to ask you. You have um, Liam Liam Harrison Training dot com, right? Yeah. So what's on there? <sighs> wow, it's ridiculous. What so, do you have so far? So on on there, this is li- literally every. Thing I know about Muay Thai has been recorded and put on there. Um, like, how? How? So how, basic. That's a lot of shit. Yeah. So I, it took me months and months to get all the. Honestly, a lot of work has gone into it. I've got probably close to fifteen hours training footage and close to seven hundred technique videos on there. And it's not just from me now. So I've started adding other fighters to it. I've got Rod Tang on there. I've got Rod Lick on there. I've got Liam Nolan. I've got Andy Alson. I've got Jordan Watson. Richard Smith. Onion topic. I've got on. They've all got their own little sections because I'm not uh, arrogant enough to think that I know everything about Muay Thai. There's the guys on there, so I've I've approached them and I paid them. I said, "Listen, if I pay you, can I put this on my website because you're better in it than I am." I'm not yeah. arrogant where I think I know everything about Muay Thai. Um, I've got sections for southpaws from like Liam Nolan and Lars Riley, Lars Smithen in uh, England and stuff. So I've got like bits on there for for everyone. I've got like some of the ties in Thailand, I said, oh, can you do some clinching techniques? Because I'm not that good at these ones. I need a tall clinch style fighter. So they've gone on there. That's Pet- Petraman Con, my trainer now from uh, Yokao Gym. He's got his own section. So I'm going to keep adding my own stuff, but I'm going to keep approaching other coaches as well because I want everyone on there to have somewhere to go to. And since we started in 2019, I've had 30,000 members now. So Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So so is it a subscription based or can you buy certain videos? So no, it's subscription. You can pay monthly or you can pay yearly. Um, there's, actually, okay. there's a sale on at the minute, a Black Friday sale. So if you use the code Friday, you'll get 30% off the, the yearly sign up. Uh, and for the amount of content on there, but... A lot of my customers are like gym owners and what they do, they go on there and then they'll, they'll get like lesson plans down from it. They'll pick certain technique videos and there's not just, there's pad drills on there. There's all my te- seminar technique videos. There's clinching. There's literally everything. There's S&C for fight specific S&C on there. Oh, and stuff. So there's a bit of everything on there. So All right. I'm about to go subscribe to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, you started that in 2019? Yeah. I never knew about it. What the fuck? So yeah, about, about, it's been going about three, three, three years, I think, three and a half years. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. That's yeah. awesome. So go to that website. Yeah, and the thing is, shit. well, everyone who, follow, who follows me on Instagram, what I always do is I started just putting some of the technique videos up, just little snippets of it, and then there's always that dickhead on the internet. Now nah, that won't work in a fight. So no. what I do now is. I put my technique and then the video of me doing it in a fight next yes, to it. Yeah. So I'm just like, how do you like me now? <laughs> Dude, I, I have people say this shit. I, I was like, I'll just snap kick you and that's it. The fight's over. <laughs> wow, well, shit. <laughs> Stop watching movies, man. Yeah. It's not it's real, <laughs> fighting, it's real fighting. So have you, uh, and I know you're probably not, but. You ever thought about fighting MMA? You do grappling? No, I've, I, you know what? I wrestled once ever and I got fucking... <laughs> and I, I fought, right? I went to my friend's MMA gym. We don't, we've got a wrestling class. Do you want to do it? I went, yeah, I fought. Because I clinch in Muay Thai. I'll be good, yeah. I'll be good at this. Yeah. Nah. No. I got fucking ragdolled all over the place. I walked out of that gym thinking, eh? I went, nah, that's not for me, but... <laughs> I love I love stand up stuff too much, and what and the thing is, if I crossed over with me, who in the right mind is going to stand up with me? Then, I'll no. be on my back like that. I, you, I, I would too. Yeah, in a second. Yeah, exactly. Try, you know. So, so what you were saying about um, um, people and you saying that you don't know everything? Uh, I've been doing this twenty five years, and I don't know shit. Yeah, like I, I know a lot, but 
like I'll go to Thailand and 14 year old kids are throwing me on my head, dude. <laughs> yeah. And they're little. Like I could pick them up and thunk, get out of here, little kid, you know? <laughs> but their technique, and yeah. I was like, okay, okay, wait. So I always try to, um, I had a couple other coaches bring their people here. Uh, they were some of my fighters too. But um, you have to have an open mind with this stuff to so where you learn. And once you close your mind, you stop learning, and then your students stop learning. Exactly. Too. Exactly. So, are you? Uh, will you plan any more seminars? I mean, not in fight camp, but before your fight camp. Um, I've got seminars up till the tenth of December, and then where are they at? Uh, I've got free in England and free in G Germany. Germany, um, yeah, England oh, and wow. Germany, yeah. So I'm gonna do my seminars up till 10th of December, and then I'll stop. And then if I am fighting on the 14th of January, Bangkok card, I'll go to Bangkok on around 2nd or 3rd of January, and then to finish my, my camp up there. Hell yeah! And, and if you guys want to do a seminar with them, you should because it was awesome. I learned some stuff. I like details, you know. In Europe, about the oh, details. Yeah. yeah. So the little details, you have to pull his weight over your leg. And, oh, it's the, those shit. sort of like little minute details, and people will be saying, hey, "I'm doing it here," but then you'll just tweak it by something like that much, and then push you in the and like, oh fucking hell. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's those little things that like they make a mass like where you if your foot goes to like just slightly that way, it'll make a difference. Or your step slightly that way, it'll make a difference. Or he's, and it's that stuff that make you go from doing, getting, get grasping the technique a little bit to mastering it. And that's why I say it's really hard to learn online because you, you're not, you're not doing every little detail yeah. and there's not somebody there watching you. But if you learn the pieces of the technique, then you figure out the tweaks to it and it works. Yeah. Like I had, I had um, a guy show me a little, little tiny move on a move I've been doing for years and it works 10 times better now. Yeah. Thai guy. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> so, uh, well, your favorite move of all moves, what's your favorite move? So I've got something like called, uh, like a leg drag off the, off the front leg push kick. Okay. Uh, and it's, I use it in sparring and tra training all the time. And it's, right. it's, it's so annoying when you do it to someone. It's, <laughs> it's a bit humiliating to be fair. Yeah. So when they try and tip you, I like to drop the leg and I, I swing the leg down and off balance and then pull them over. I, I, know, I think I know which one you're talking about, yeah. but, but show me. Okay, let's go. Liam Harrison, favorite move out of all the moves he shows. Favorite move. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate this one. I use this one a lot when I'm sparring. Uh, and I've never got right the actual bottle to do it yet in a fight, but I use it all the time when I'm sparring. I post the videos on Instagram all the time. And everyone always says, how do you get, I, I can't do it, I'm trying to do it, I can't get the, the dynamics of it right. Okay, so off the left teeth. The left teeth is gonna come, I'll demonstrate it full speed first. So the left teeth comes, I step back, and then I pull back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Watch how I do this, so it's real slow now. The left heel comes, I step back, it drops into the palm of my left hand, yeah? You have to step back because if I just stay there, I'm gonna get it stuck in a bit and push me back. So it drops into the palm of my left hand. What you need to be doing is you need to make your, your partner or your opponent bounce before you try and off balance them. So as I pull it back to my right, that's see the hop there? That's what you want to happen to. You catch and pull it to your right. Your weight goes onto your back leg and then you swing your weight around a little bit. So as I hop, pulling back here, I then release down to my left. So I pull to my right and I release to my left and then come down there, yeah? Make sure your back leg pivots around as you do it and you're throwing it down low. Don't do this and throw it up high because you're not gonna bring him down. You might have to balance him a little bit and put him in a position where you can land somewhere, but you won't bring him down. To bring him down, you have to come real low. <laughs> roll down there. Okay, so that's my favorite move. So you're putting the weight, you're pulling his weight onto that leg, and then when he thinks he's gonna stand on it, yeah, it just at that last leg. split second as his legs going down, I change the direction. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I've seen that move uh, before <laughs> on your Instagram, and I hit one of my kids with it. With my bet, one of my best fighters, he got all mad, you know, because I threw him down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a cool move. But you never pulled it off in fights before. No, I, I, you know what? I, Whenever I catch someone's leg in a fight, I'm always tempted to just dump them on their head. And that. yeah. That's like a bit humiliating. Yeah. Um, and I remember my friend, uh, a top Thai coach, Duao, uh, who showed me that. He were in England and he showed me it and he kept doing it to me. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? He kept me? doing that move yeah. to you? And he wouldn't show me it at first. <laughs> he, went, he went, no, no, my move. <laughs> and then when he, when he went left to go back to Thailand, he, he showed me it. And then I, I, I went, right, this is how you do it. And then I perfected it now and I've got it down myself. Do you know what? If I was really humiliating someone in a fight and they tried to teach me, I wouldn't do that to them. 
But like I say, when I'm in a fight, I'd prefer to catch and try and land a big knockout punch yeah. or a big massive sweep. Yeah. But if you did do that sort in a fight, it would be pretty humiliating. How, you know, how did you get so fast with your, your with your sweeps and your dumps? Because like you have it already, like one of them that you catch the leg and you step through at the same time. So there's no catch, stop, and step through. Yeah. It's all at whoop. And, and they they fall like that. How yeah. do you get that timing to do it like that? that would just, do you dump each other in training like that? When we spar, we do. Oh, you do? Yeah, when we spar, we do. Because yeah, a lot of gyms uh, don't like it when yeah, you do Yeah, but when we spar, <laughs> we just don't give a fuck. <laughs> if you, listen, if you get your leg caught in sparring in our gym, you're on your ass, and it's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's just that's just, it's just years and years of sparring. Like I was shown the techniques, and they just stuck in my head. I thought, wow, I like them. And then like the stuff like with the scissor movement and that and stuff, I started putting my own little spin on them and I, I practiced them that much. I found out stuff that I thought, oh, if I do it like this, that works a lot better than what you show me and stuff. So like I said, it's just years of sparring, years of sparring and practicing my timing and stuff and yeah, and just drilling them. They're, they're cool too. Your yeah. dumps are cool. And my Americans, we like dumps. Yeah. I mean, no, 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 no. we just do. So uh, what's your least favorite move? What move do you hate? I'm like, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say I, I, I hate anything, but push kick, and because I'm so short and stumpy and that, like, I'm not a big push kicker. I use it in the gym sometimes, but, like, usually in fights, I try and stay away from that. Just, I just don't really. It doesn't suit my style whatsoever because I'm, I'm, I'm my style, hard punches, hard kicks and sweeps and that, yeah. and, like, teeps don't really come into it, especially because most people I fight are a bit taller than me as well. It's difficult to try to teep someone who's taller than you. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not really a fan of them. I like them getting done to me because I've got so many ways I can counter them. Uh, but I, 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 you'll never really see me using too many teams. So, who was your favorite fighter? Like you, you had to watch fighter. Did you watch Muay Thai? Yeah, uh, before I, I, I before obsessed. you started training. No, no. But as soon as I did start training, like obviously YouTube wasn't a thing back then, so I couldn't just go on YouTube. And like yeah. all the fighters these days, you've got access to so much yeah. online. So back then we didn't. I used to go to the the video store and we had like. DVD had just come out, I think. So that they had some DVDs and they had some old VHS. Of, yeah, VCDs? Yeah, v v VHS. They I have. still have some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I used to go to HMV, the CD store, and then in there, in the video section upstairs, in the sports, I'd always find, like, they'd have some video from Thailand, fight, ties, fighting ties, and then some, like, uh, kickboxing uh, kickboxing versus Thailand from America and stuff like that. So I'd buy all these DVDs and yeah. watch them. Oh, it's fucking amazing. And like every couple of months, I'd get a new one in. So I'd go every week. Is it in yet? Is it in? Yeah. yeah. In. Um, but yeah, I were obsessed with watching stuff like that. So who was your favourite? I used to love watching Tong Chai, saw to Tosila Chai. He were, he were the first fighter that I saw who had like a really hard punching, hard leg kick style. And he's the only man to ever knock out Sanchai as well. So when I first saw him fight, I used to love watching him fight. He would walk forward, bam, bang, and he kicked not just to the front leg, he, would, he smashed the back leg to bits as well, which is something I don't really do. But uh, yeah, I used to love watching him. It was, it was just vicious. You should, it hurts more. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. It does. <laughs> so uh, you like Coban then too, huh? Yeah, Coban. Coban were another one. How points and air. Uh, points and air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about uh, uh, Ramon Deckers? Yeah, Deckers, he, were, uh, he was just an animal one, really, to be fair. Yeah. I never really watched, tried to model my style too much on his because he took a lot of damage. Yeah. yeah and But that's the way he fought. He was just an animal. He was just like, yeah, whatever. You can hit me this many times. I'm going to hit you more. Well, the reason I say Ramon Deckers is because, like I said, you hit hard yeah. and you throw with 100%, yeah. you know, and that's what he's doing. Yeah, I, that, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I did like to take from him, especially yeah. when he were hitting the pads and stuff himself. Yeah. Hard, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah all right, awesome. Uh, um, so with doing Muay Thai or anything, what would you like to accomplish? Um, I'd just like to be able to... In, it's a tough question. I just want to be better than I was the day before at everything. At one percent better every day. We always say in our gym. Do you know what I mean? I just want to be yeah. able to. If I could accomplish anything, it'd be for me now. I don't want. I want to get to a, the stage where I get another shot at that one one championship title. But I also want to be able to inspire people, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's being a coach, being a fighter, or I want to inspire the younger generation. I want to show these people that you can make a good living from Muay Thai, that you can make a good career, that if you do it all properly and you take the right fights and you do the right training and you, you've listened to your, your coach and your gym and stuff, that you can make a good living out of it. So that's where I like to, I like to inspire, inspire the, the next generation. Well, uh, 
I'm going to put this out there. You already do. I mean, mm. a, a lot of people. It's funny, a lot of people. Because uh, you're not Thai and you go and you fight big name ties and you do really well, mm. you know? So you do. You do aspire people. Hell yeah. I, I love it. So um, what, do you, what do you hate about this business? Like the whole thing. Name one thing. Politics. Oh, the man. fucking politics between, like for, like for example, like uh, what? So in the UK, so with it's politics between different promotions and different sanctioning bodies, and having eighty-four million different world titles, shitty belts that you can win. I hate all that bullshit. <laughs> the, the people out there calling themselves world champion after fifteen fights because they won some Mickey Mouse world title that no one's ever yeah. heard of that the promoter just made up for them. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Shit like that pisses me off. Like certain promoters in England, not all, not work out. Uh, he can't fight on my show because he's already fought for that promoter. No, I'm not having him. Bullshit yeah, like that's that. Bullshit. I so hate like that. Mickey Mouse titles that does my head in, and bullshit where promoters won't work with each other. They're the two the two main things for me. I really can't stand them. That's what keeps us from growing. Yeah, of course. Man, I I, I was talking about a Damien trainer, and somebody said something, and it was like they were like. And, and yeah. I was like, this is like the old Axe Forum. Yeah, remember, you know remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Axe kickboxing. That was like, I love it on there. <laughs> the only thing that is a fucking, people who just come on under fake names and aliases. Oh, yeah, fuck it. Talk a bunch of shit. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. was so bad. Everybody hated everybody. Yeah. yeah. We're trying to build our sport, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that, that was a good answer, dude. So what in life do you love, man? Like, what if you didn't do Muay Thai? I mean... Not not Muay Thai and and your family too. Everybody says my family. Yeah, of course. But what in life do you my love? My dog. My dog. I love my dog. My dog. What yeah. kind of dog you got? I've got a German Shepherd. You got a German uh, Shepherd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She like whenever I'm a bit depressed, she yeah. <laughs> my little shit. Yeah. If I, if I ever need like a bit of time out, I just go out for the day with her, take her out, just to get me yeah. out straight and stuff. Yeah. But um, nice. a football, soccer for you guys. Football. Yeah. I'm a massive Leeds United fan. Yeah. Um, so whenever I've got like Saturdays free with no seminar and stuff, I'll be down at Ellen Road, the stadium. You play? I used to play when okay. I was younger. Yeah, but obviously the older I played up until I was about seventeen. Knees uh, and and yeah, and but ankles. I, that's what I started yeah. to think. I started. To, oh no, I played, I played till I was twenty actually. I played up until I was twenty, and then I thought, you know what? If I get injured here, then I'm not going to be able to make money from fighting. I'm going to be fucked here. Yeah. So I thought. I'm not going to be able to do it. When I retire, I think I'll, I'll play for like maybe a veterans team or something like that no. because I, I do really miss playing. I used to, I played from being six year old up until I was 20 year old. So it was a long Shit. time of playing, wow. but then I realized that I had to like put it on the back burner and stuff. So yeah, I do miss that. But you see like, uh, even Sanchai and Rod Tang still play football. And I see that. They yeah. still play. So that, that made me think of this thing. So, you know, Sanchai and, um, do you think, that bull cow versus Sanchai. One, do you think that that'll go through? And two, do you think that they're going to really fight? No, not going to. The fucking best friends out. And that's what I told everybody. And everybody's like, bullshit, they're going to do it. Well, the, one, the best friends. Two, yeah. bull cow's twice as big as him. Yeah. Three, the, no, it is not free because the other two are so good. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I, no, the, the, literally the other day, my boss from Yokao Filippo, the man who owns Yokao, he's he's my one of my bosses as well. I, I'm a sponsored Yokao fighter, so he's the Yokao boss. He sent me a picture and it was him, Sanchai and Bukau eating a birthday cake. And that were only two days ago. Yeah. That was after the fight has been announced. Yeah. So they're still together. The thing is with those two guys, they train together so much and they're so skilled. Even if they haven't got any gloves on, it's not a bare knuckle boxing fight. Even if it's bare knuckle Muay Thai, so even if they they don't have any gloves on, they're so skilled. They'll make it look like a fight without yeah. getting hurt. I agree. Because I've, I've watched them spar so many times together at Yokao Gym, where they've had just gloves on, no shin pads, and it looks like they're going hard, but they're not because they're that skilled. They know what they're doing. Yeah. But let's be honest, like Sanchai in his prime, we're fighting at 130 pounds. Bukau for his prime, we're fighting at 154 on K1. Yeah. Bukau's twice the size of Sanchai. Sanchai, he's, he's a bit out of shape now, isn't he, really? Yeah. He doesn't really train. Bukau's still big and, and solid and strong. So it's, it's not even, it wouldn't even be a fair fight anyway, real, really. So I can't, I cannot see how it's going to be real. I might be wrong, but. No, I, I think that it's going to be an exhibition. Yeah. So I think, and, and everybody's yelling at me for it. You're just, oh, whatever. And so I think that they're going to make the promotion think that it's real. Yeah. But it's not nah. be real. And the thing is, Eva, as well, people are loving it, going, I don't care. I don't want to see two 42 year old men way past the prime. One's bigger than the other, like beating yeah. each other up. If it had have happened 
15 years ago when they were both fucking prime beasts yeah. and, <laughs> and, and they were the same weight, then, do you know what I mean? But yeah. 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 It, it, they're they're not going to fight. They're nah. friends. Yeah. They're best friends. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. So, um, th- what in life do you hate? Uh, oof. Question that. Um, Ooh, that's, that's a deep one, bro. Yeah, it come is. on. Do you know what the first thing that came in? Do you know what the first thing that came into my head? Yeah, okay, that's what I want. Do you know, what, I don't know why I've got a fucking weird <laughs> fear of thinking. Um, no, like I said, like, what would he love? And I said, my dog. I remember being in China when I was fighting once and seeing them fucking markets with dogs all strung up nah, and stuff like that, mate. Nah. And that made me sick to my stomach yeah. badly. That that so that's what that's yeah. one of the first thing that came to my head. That yeah. it fucking that pisses me right off, Whoa. and I, and they boil them alive and do shit like that to me. It's fucking what? disgraceful, yeah. I've been I, to I, China, but I, mate, I was in the back middle. I went to fight. I fought a, a Thai there called Sagat Dao, and I, it was, I can't remember. Sagat Dao, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin fought Sagat Dao, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I fought Sagat Dao in China, you know, like in the back end, middle of fucking. I don't know where I was. Um, I've never even heard of the city before, and I can't even pronounce it. But there was just all kinds of weird shit going on. And I saw what it's past this little market thing, and they had loads of dogs like that. And then they had, they had one that they'd boiled, and I'm like, "What the fuck is going on here?" That, that's all. That that's one thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so weird, man. But we love dogs, and and they think of dogs as like um, cows or something. Yeah, you know? true. But, oh, you made me mad. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> that was the first thing. The first what thing the that fuck? bounced into my head. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so what's your favorite saying? Um, like. Like if 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 I talk to one of your buddies and he always says this, <laughs> you know, all the time. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I cannot stop saying? And we started doing this because my boss, the Yokao boss, is Italian. Okay. So I started saying this like to him all the time. Going, Forget about it. Forget about it. I used to say that to him all the time, and then it's just stuck with me all the time. So whenever something fucking something quite bad up, I'm pretty chilled with stuff. Me. So whenever something's bad up, and I always just go, "Forget about it." <laughs> just to chill out, so, yeah. Uh, just, it's just I'm just he's just stuck with me all the time. <laughs> so you know what my uh, I've only been to England once, but you know what my one of my favorite thing about British people in, is. Okay, fuck off in <laughs> England means something different than fuck off means here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so fuck off means fuck off. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Here, if you're like, fuck off, you want to fight? Yeah. No, I want you to fuck off. Right, so as well, <laughs> in England as well, if you call someone a cunt in England, you, you say that to your friends. Yeah, we, yeah. We all call each other, oh, yeah. you're a cunt, you're a cunt. Yeah. Uh, but over here, but, 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 whoa. Drop, drop the sea bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like we said, sure, you silly cunt. Like Joe, yeah, yeah. We, do, we all call each other. Australians do the same as well. Yeah. Yeah. G'day, cunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do, but like over here, like we say, like, whoa, whoa, yeah. Yeah, whoa. Yeah. And Texas is worse, dude. Yeah. If you cuss at somebody, they think you want to fight. Yeah, really? Like, yeah. No, I don't want to fight. That, that's fight. just how we speak to each other in England. Yeah. <laughs> Saying hi, punch them in the face. Yeah. 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 yeah, I like that, though. That's cool. <laughs> uh, my, my, I'm Scottish too, so oh, have you? I, I got Ooh, it. They're, they're a different breed of them, man. I got it in my blood. <laughs> I want to punch people walking down the road all the time. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> so let's say you didn't you didn't do Muay Thai, <clears throat> and what profession would you do? I, don't, I honestly don't know because I've not come close to doing anything. It'd be, it'd be some sort of labor work, I'm guessing. Build, yeah. build a bricky or something like that because ah. my brain's not the sharpest <laughs> tool in the box. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been I mean, hitting the head a lot. Too. Yeah, mm. my brain's not the sharpest tool in the box and I was, I was useless in school. Um, so it'd have to be some sort of labor work, bricking or something like that. But oh, I'd probably be in jail because I was a little bastard before I started Thai boxing. Sh- the, 100% yeah. me too. Mm. I was in trouble yeah. all the time. And when I started fighting, it, um, I could take my aggression yeah. out somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. I, I'd be in prison for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, so do you have a plan of something to do after after you do this? I'm just going to keep, uh, hopefully my seminars will keep keep me going. I'm going to work full-time training the fighters in my gym. I don't want to have my own gym. I don't want to have the, because I've had such a good career myself, I don't really want the stress of people saying, ooh, what Liam Harrison's fighters like? Are these going to be as good as him? <coughs> I prefer to just work in bad company and freelance myself around. If I want to go work in another gym for a day, I can. If I want to go to America and do a seminar tour for two weeks, I can. I, don't, I won't have to worry about my own gym, my own fighters, and I can just do my own thing. Uh, I'd it, it is it is a huge stress, yeah. but <clears throat> it's also rewarding yeah. too. You know, like your coach. What's your coach's name? Richard. Richard. Richard is fucking 
super proud of you. That's yeah. super re- rewarding. Yeah. yeah. To see your guy yeah. fighting one and all over the world, Lumpini and all that shit. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I had a couple of my fighters uh, uh, move to Thailand and stay. They fought on Max, you know, and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. They did really well, yeah. you know? So they would ask me, what would you do if... I said, if I was 27, I'd fucking be over there right now. Yeah, fucking right, not. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So, it's rough. But, um, okay. So, you're gonna, um, you're gonna still train people. Yeah. And that's yeah, good. 100%. Yeah. 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 I, I, I love holding the pads and stuff, but like I said, the only reason I don't do it is it fucks me up and yeah, zaps yeah. my energy so much. So, but mm-hmm. if, well, if I ain't got a fight to go for, I'll hold pads every day. It's hard, and that yeah. shit will catch up with you too. Yeah, of course. My back yeah. and my arms, yeah, everything, yeah. you know, but... But that's what we do. Yep. That's what we yep. do. All right. So last one. This one's deep though. At the end of your life, all said and done, how would you like for people to remember you? That Mung Thai fight. That fight? Remember me as the guy who- Dude, everybody's going to remember that fucking fight. And remember me as the guy who got up when not many other people would. That's why I'd like to be remembered as. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. That's it. Just that, just that fight because that was- <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that moment you when after the second knockdown when like, so what happened after that second knockdown? Um, after the fight, my, all my friends and family, my my phone went fucking nuts. I had some friends who texted me and said, "Fucking hell, I turned it off." Fucking I, idiots! I, I couldn't. No. They said I was six and we know how badly that was, there were a lot on the line for that fight and how badly he wanted to win. Said so I couldn't watch you get stopped. I said, "You fucking idiots! Yeah. Where, where were the faith? Where's, fuck, the, yeah. where's the faith?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I try to instill this in my guys too. There, there's a, a lot of people that it's their brain, man. Like, look, if somebody, dude, I I have been beat up a lot. All right, so I haven't won a lot too. But anyways, so when you're losing, it's this one. Okay, the guy's better than me. I'm going to try to knock this motherfucker yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go swing and I probably won't. Yeah. But what if I do? You know? Exactly. But what I, if, yeah. I got to try, you yeah. know? If these guys that get hit and then they just go down, 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 down. That's the mm-hmm. guy that I want to fight because all I have to do is have a little bit more heart than he has. Exactly, yeah, and yeah. I'll win. To have that, what you did in that fight is... That's the definition of a fighter. Yeah. Well, I got to go try to knock him out because yeah. I'm going to lose this shit, you know? Mm. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Well, we got to go to the airport. I got to take you back and go <laughs> back to the UK. But I appreciate you stopping and doing this seminar. was awesome. Thank man. you, man. Glad okay. you enjoyed it. So what, what, you got a website? Yeah, liamarisontraining.com. Okay. How about Instagram? Uh, Liam Badco. Liam Badco. All right. Thanks, dude. Nice one. Thank you, mate. Thank you. All right, cool, dude. I yeah. yeah, dude. Um, yeah. I just like to talk shit and, and yeah. like, get to know people, you know. Um, I, it's just like.